All right, so building on the stuff that we've done so far, we can keep adding cool tracking methods to our tool belt. Um, and we're gonna talk here about blob tracking. Um, blob tracking is a way of um, sort of like finding big areas of shapes on the screen. It's irrelevant what color they are or um, you know what they actually are. We're able to track sort of big areas on the screen. Um, now this is got a lot more complicated math behind it, but um, we can actually build some uh, all of this in JavaScript again. Um, this does rely on an additional library uh, called hull.js, and I'm gonna say this name wrong, I'm sorry, by Andre Hionia. Uh, and this is it here. It's um, a lot. I don't know exactly how this works, and there's lots of other ways of handling the same thing. Um, but let's go ahead and build this in uh, P5.js and, and implement this. So rather than work with video, I've got a still image here, and there's actually a couple different images we'll try out so you can see them. Um, we've got a blob that I drew in Photoshop. Uh, we have some with holes. We've got two blobs, so we can see how that works. And then we've got um, this cute image of a dog taking a nap uh, that we'll come back to last. Um, this will not work great with real-time video. It's gonna be definitely kind of slow. So that's something to think about. And we'll talk in a little bit about some of the other limitations of blob tracking. Um, okay, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add no loop here because we're just working with a static image. And great, so all of our work here is gonna happen in the draw. Um, the first thing I wanna do is draw my image. And then pre-processing is a huge part of um, this kind of computer vision work. So if I have an image um, that I wanna extract blobs, our algorithm is gonna look for black blobs on a white background. Color, grayscale is all gonna confuse it. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is do some filtering. Um, we can do threshold. You could certainly use your own threshold algorithm, but I'm just using the built-in one for P5.js. And another very helpful filter here will be dilate. And um, dilate uh, fills holes, smooths edges. It's just gonna make our blob finding a little more accurate. Um, one other filter we might wanna do here is invert depending on our image. So if our image was a black background with a white blob, um, you might wanna, or you might need to include invert here. So in this case, we're not gonna see much difference because it's already been thresholded. Um, it is a little, maybe it doesn't show up on your video. It's a little crisper now because it's just a binary image, um, but this will be important if you're working with a camera input or something like that. Okay, then um, actually I lied. There's one other big, part of code here that we need for this. And this is some stuff that I've put together. So the hull library is a portion of this. I'm gonna paste this in. And this is all written in P5.js. Um, this is a blob class. And um, I spent a long time trying to make this as readable and easy for you to use as possible, hopefully. Um, and in the next video, which will be optional, I'll go through in more detail what's going on here. For now, we can imagine it doesn't matter. It's just sort of like magic code. Um, and if that's cool with you, then you could just leave it right there. Um, but then what I want to do is um, find the blob. So this will be a new blob. Um, now there's two ways that this will work. One, if I had an image I wanted to send in or a video frame, you could do that. Or if you want to use the canvas, you can send in this. And this means um, this canvas. Then um, there's two other arguments that we can add for this. The first is concavity. This is how tightly the blob finding algorithm is gonna try to cling to the edge of the blob. The, um, the higher that number is, the faster this is gonna be, the, but the less accurate. The lower that number, the quicker, or I'm sorry, the slower, but the more accurate it's gonna be. So the default is 20, we'll start there. Um, and then there's another argument, actually we'll come back to that. And let's go ahead and use console.log blob here, kind of like we did in the last example, just to see what this gives us. So when it's done, I get this object that's the blob class, and I can see some of the um, items this class includes. Again, this is a really great discovery tool for you as you're exploring pieces of code. So um, we get the area of the blob in pixels. We get its bounding box, which is sort of a a box drawn around it. We get a centroid. This is the um, middle and the way that's measured is kind of interesting. Again, we'll talk about it in the next optional video. Um, the concavity setting is there. The convex hull, which is um, kind of imagine if you had a, a shape and you pulled a sheet 
tightly around it. Um, so it's not conforming to concave parts, but sort of just stretched around it. And then the outline is that really careful um, tracing around it. OK, so let's go ahead and draw some of these things. So I'm going to actually draw my um, original blob again. Uh, actually, you know what? We don't need that for now. Um, we'll see this in a little bit, maybe. We might want to redraw this with like some um, dimming so that we can see it better. Um, OK, you know what? I am going to copy paste this again so you don't have to see me do this. Um, so the first thing I'm going to draw is the outline of the blob. And the real work here is be between begin shape and end shape. So we just go through the points in the blob's outline. And um, super simple. So we can see, oh, funny. I don't know what's going on here. It's finding some funky stuff here. Why is that happening? Um, you know what? Maybe because our image is not as big as our canvas. So already we're seeing some limitations here. It's finding some additional pixels that it thinks are part of this blob. So you can see it's like including those. Let's um, let's just do this. I thought I was being clever for our demo here so it would fit, but apparently not. Um, we'll make this the size of our image. Cool. So you can see now it um, draws very carefully around the outside of this um, blob. If I change the concavity setting from 20 to 10, it's going to be more accurate. Um, we might not see a big difference. Let's bump that way down. But it is going to be slower. So there we go, a setting of three totally capturing all these details. Something like 30, um, you can see it's sort of cutting some quarters. It's not going as deeply into there. Um, and depending on your application, you probably don't need perfect blob fitting. It's just going to slow stuff down. Um, let's see some of the other stuff. So we can also see that convex hull. The convex hull is that like sheet wrapped around. And so that's the one in blue here. So you can see it's basically just like, it's always going to be a convex shape that it's capturing. And then we can also see the bounding box. And the bounding box, this. So the bounding box has an X and a Y, a width and a height. Um, the bounding box is great as a really simple metric, especially if you're doing games where you want to see where this thing collides. You can also do bounding circles or bounding ellipses. And then the last thing is the centroid. This is the middle of the blob. And um, this has got some interesting math behind this. It's not the center though here it kind of looks like it. It's not the center of the bounding box. It's actually the visually weighted center of the whole blob. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, cool, so that's the, the basics of blob tracking. Again, it's about how you kind of plug this in. There's one more um, optional argument here for the blob class that we can add um, concavity. Let's put that back to the default. Um, in this case, the way this blob tracking is working is it's looking at every pixel in the image and it's finding all the black pixels and then doing some math with them. Um, but by going through every pixel, it gets really slow, especially if you wanted to use this with video. So instead, we can specify how, what kind of the resolution of this search is. Um, and uh, the default is one, so it's gonna go every pixel. But if we do four, it's gonna go every fourth pixel. And this is gonna really speed up our process um, it won't be as accurate. You can see my blob fitting is not perfect. But again, we rarely need the perfect outline of this. You're actually just approximate is good enough. So that's going to be a really helpful setting. Let's look at how this works with some different images. So the blob with holes, you can see it ignores those internal holes. So um, the way this particular algorithm works, it's not going to be able to find those cutouts, which for most purposes is going to be OK. The real limitation is when we have two blobs. So you can see this is kind of what happened before when, when we had the error. It's trying to create a single blob that contains these two blobs. So if you had multiple um, things on the screen you were tracking, this system is not going to work super well, unfortunately. And then here's our dog. And if we run this, this is a good example where um, maybe you can't really tell, but it's thinking that the whole uh, image is our blob. And the reason is, if you remember, it's looking for black areas on white. And in this case, the dog is, um, is light colored on a dark background. So for that, I'm going to turn on invert. And now we get pretty good um, dog tracking here. Um, 
for this purpose, this is why I wanted to draw that image again. So let's uh, go ahead and do that because my image has been filtered. So I'm going to say IMG00. And um, you know, if you want, you could draw like a rectangle on top of this extend my transparent or something. But this does a really pretty darn good job. Um, you know, compared to our eyes, it's definitely nowhere near what our eyes can do in an instant with no effort. Um, but the convex hull here, and especially the bounding box, does a great job of finding this cute sleeping little puppy on the ground. Um, and blob tracking is perfect for this kind of thing. Now, you definitely need very careful control over the situation for blob tracking. You need a light object on a dark background or vice versa. You need not a, to have a lot of extra stuff going on. So blob tracking has a lot of limitations, but again, it's really awesome because you can do it just with code here. Um, oh, and then the last thing maybe to just add is that this hull library is the part that does some of the extra work here um, and enables us to actually extract the blob from this. Um, but yeah, so in the next video, I'll take a deeper look um, into how the blob class is working. And if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Otherwise, you can skip ahead to the last demo.